Okay, we're going to look at some different types of word problems. We're going to do one example of each. And I've provided over here for you a graphic organizer. And this will be attached to your homework sheet that you can also use. You don't have to, but I think it helps. So we read, we're doing a mixture problem here. We have 80% gold mixed with pure. Now, anytime you see the word pure, that means it is 100%. So we're looking at two different types here. We've got 80% gold that we're mixing with 100% gold to end up with a mixture that is 92%. Now, since we are dealing with percentages here, one of the things we need to do is always change our percent to a decimal. So, just as a quick review, percent that means there are two decimal places. So what we do is we move our two decimals to the left, and that means this is going to be 0.8. If we do 100%, move it to, that means that's going to be 1, and then 92% would be 0.92. Now, we take the amounts for each. How many ounces of 80%? How many? That we don't know, so since that's our unknown, we're going to make that our variable x. Mixed with 6 ounces of pure, so this is 6. And then we have our mixture. Now, our mixture amount is these two right here added together. That's what we're adding together to get our mix. So this is x plus 6. So then we end up with 0.8x. Here we end up with 6, and then here we end up with 0.92 times x plus 6. And then what I have over here on the side is you add these two things together to equal this bottom one. So our equation ends up being 0.8x plus 6 equals 0.92 times x plus 6. Now that we've done some various equations and worked them out. I'm not going to work this out. I'm just going to put the answer. But if you have questions about how did I solve this, you can always ask me later. So again, we solve this. We get x is 4. Now, we got to make sure we answer the question. That's always important with these. So it says, how many ounces of 80%? So we go back up here. And we look, x represented the amount for our 80%. So we would say x is 4, and then this was a unit of ounces. So that would be our solution. Okay, this next problem is a distance, rate, and time problem. Okay, so a cruise ship left the Dania Pier and traveled towards St. Vincent at an average speed of 25 kilometers an hour. A container ship left sometime later traveling in the same direction at an average of 30 kilometers an hour. After traveling for 10 hours, the container ship caught up with the cruise ship. How long did the cruise ship travel? All right, so the first thing you got to do is you got to determine are the distances equal or are you, do, are you adding them to get some sort of total? Well, when we read right here that after traveling for 10 hours, the container ship caught up with the cruise ship. That means they've been going the same direction and they've caught up with each other, which means in this case, we have a problem where we are doing equal distances. Okay, so what's our traveler? We got a cruise ship and then we have a container. And I'm just going to abbreviate here container ship traveling. What's the rate of the cruise ship? It traveled at 25 kilometers an hour and how long did it travel we don't know we just know it traveled some amount of time it said the cruise ship traveled average speed container ship left later traveling in the same direction that's a key there same direction at 30 kilometers an hour after traveling for 10 hours the container ship so the container ship traveled for 10 hours. Now, if you look at the top here, rate times time equals our distance. 
So all I'm going to do is multiply straight across here, 25t, and then that's going to be 300. And then what did we say? We're talking about these distances being equal. So my equation becomes 25t equals 300. So just divide 300 by 25, and you get 12. So that means the amount of time that the cruise ship traveled was for 12 hours. All right, the next type of problem here is a work rate problem. And these can be tricky, and I'll be honest with you. How I'm going to work these is completely different than what you'll see in the Savas book. I don't really like what Savas does, but again, there are different ways to do it, so you just take what's what makes sense to you, okay? Now, it says working alone, it takes Jade 18 hours to clean an attic. So this is Jade. And then next we have Julia. Jade works at a rate of 18 hours to clean the attic. So it's one job in 18 hours. I know that seems kind of weird to do a fraction, but all of this is based on completing a job. And this job is a one, one complete job. Julia works in 16 hours, so one sixteenth. If they work together, how long would it take them? So the time is, we don't know, but we're just going to say T, and it's the same for both because they are working together. So here I get T over 18. Here I get T over 16, and I'm going to add those two and equal them to 1. Now, there are different ways to work this. Uh, my suggestion in doing this would be find a common denominator. Okay, find a common denominator and multiply all that by the common denominator. Well, that's kind of tough because you've got 18 and 16, and you can think about it in different ways. Um, but here's how I would think about it. 18 is broken down as 2 times 9. 16 is broken down as 2 times 8. So what's a common factor? They both have a common factor of 2. So what I want to do is see then is what's not common. Take those, 8 and 9, and then take the common factor of 2, multiply it once, and that's going to give me my common denominator, which is 72 times 2, which is 144. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole equation, multiply it by 144. Then I see how many times does 18 go into 144, and that would be 8 times. So that's going to be 8t. 16 goes into 144 9 times. And then 144 times 1 is 144. So what I'm really doing here is basically like distributive property. And this will be something we may need to talk a little bit more in class. Now I combine those, and that gives me 17t equals 144. Divide 144 by 17. And that's going to give me some sort of weird decimal number, okay? So if they work together, how long would it take them? So in this particular case, we get approximately 8.47 hours. All right, finally, we have these consecutive integer problems. So real quick, before we even do the problem, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. If we ever see consecutive integers, that's one right after the other. So if I just think about one, two, three, four, and just keep going, all of these I have to add one to to get to the next integer. So if it says consecutive integers, then that's always going to be listed as x, x plus one, x plus 2 because I had one more and so on and so forth. But if it ever says consecutive 
odd slash even integers. Then those integers, so if I think like 3, 5, 7, or 2, 4, 6, all of these differ by 2. So it's x, x plus 2, then x plus 4. They're always increasing by 2. So anytime I have those, I represent them oops, using these expressions. Now, for this particular problem, it says the sum, sum is add, three consecutive integers is 51. So that means I have x plus just consecutive, x plus 1 plus x plus 2, and all that together has to equal 51. Again, combine your like terms. You can go through this. That's 3x plus 3 equals 51. And I'll save you the rest of this. You can do this on your own, but then you get x is 16. Now, what's the question asked for? Find the value of the greatest of the three. So if x is 16 up here, and the next one would be 17, and the last one would be 18. So 18 is the biggest. Now, what you could do is just double-check your answers. What's 16 plus 17? 16 plus 17 is 33. 33 plus 18 is 51.